Hello everyone and welcome back to Bobbin's Minecraft Let's Play featuring the FTB Infinity Evolve Skyblock mod pack. You're watching episode 20. I want to show you a little bit about what I've done in the Batania area before we go on and talk about what's going on in Blood Magic because I've got a lot that's been done in Blood Magic. Then I'm going to go and, and we're going to do some Thomcraft. So this is definitely going to be a magic based episode. And as I've actually posted in the comments before, I'm not actually a big player of the magic mods. So I don't really expect that I have just a great deal of expertise in them. But I do want to cover the progress that's been made. And I hope today to actually get one of the magic-based achievements done. I kind of have everything I need. And I'm going to need it to continue to progress. We'll see how time goes and see if that happens. So, just looking here in the Batania area, the main thing that I've done here is I have set up the terrestrial agglomeration plate for making terra steel, and I've tested it by making a couple of pieces of terra steel. I haven't gone and made a bunch of terra steel yet because I don't really need it yet. However, with this, I actually really would like to keep more mana on hand, especially since I've got bees continuously coming in and being fed to begonias. So I actually have sort of a trickle of mana coming in all the time, and I do want to be able to store it. So I went ahead and set up a mana distributor with four mana pools to actually accumulate some more mana. And each one of these mana pools has a spark over it, and there's a spark over the, the terrestrial agglomeration plate. So it actually makes the terra steel pretty quickly. And other than that, I have gone ahead and set up three of the mana spreaders over here pointing to the runic altar because we're going to need to make something today that requires a lot of mana. And I don't want it to take forever to do it. I guess a spark will work here. I've never actually tried a spark on a runic altar, so I'm not 100% on that. But... I don't think I'm going to need it. I think I can probably get by with the spreaders. So let's go and take a look at the Blood Magic area. When I left in the last episode, I had just set up the altar. And I was using a sacrificial orb to put some uh, blood, or LP if you prefer, in, in the altar and um, I had made my first slate. Well, since then, I've done quite a bit of upgrading, and one of the upgrades you've already seen, because it's massive, this is a um, mob spawning area here, controllable by lights, and it actually is pretty big, so it spawns a lot of mobs. And of course, in order to use that, I did need to get my altar upgraded to tier two, so that I could craft a dagger of sacrifice you basically kill mobs with this thing while you're standing right here and that will allow you to um, get LP without having to stand there and heal now early on when you are standing there and heal one thing that is pretty beneficial is you'll notice I've got all these pink particles going around that is coming from a regeneration effect that is apply applied by the Imperial B the Imperial has a um, an effect uh, beatific, I guess. Um, but that effect is a healing effect. It, it, it applies regeneration periodically. It's a very short-term duration. But if you're standing right here, then, then it applies fairly often, and, and it will help when you're just trying to heal up doing that initial self-sacrificing. You don't need any potions or anything. You just sort of heal up that way and keep plenty of food on hand other stuff going on here I haven't really fully automated this altar haven't even really attempted to do it yet the um, the thing that I have done is I've automated pulling completed slates out and I've just set up a few filters on this thing let's see um, really I should just keep that on extract this one is pulling out blank slates 
There's also one here that pulls out the Tier 2 slate and one that pulls out the Tier 3 state slate since I've made progress on them. And I just put in the previous item to craft it and, and have it pull out automatically. You still have to stand here and feed it to do that, but it's, it's not as much of an interaction thing going on. When you're killing mobs, all sorts of drops, including experience, comes through here. I'm using vacuum hoppers to pick that stuff up and put it in there. I also get it in my inventory and occasionally some of it will get stuck in various places and I'll have to go pick it up. But um, what I've done in terms of upgrading the altar itself is once I got some slates, I made some blood runes, which is this block right here. And in this mod pack, you have to have Thalmcraft stuff and witchery stuff to make blood runes. But normally you would just need the... It would be a purely blood magic and vanilla recipe. This is not really too bad. But you make these blood rune blocks and you put them down. Initially you'll have eight of them around here. I've upgraded some of my blood runes and we'll talk about that. But you put eight of them down and then your altar will be upgraded to tier two. Now, to see your progress, one of the early items you should make is this divination sigil. If you click the divination sigil on the altar, it gives the status of the altar. There's currently zero essence in this altar. It's a tier 3 altar, and it has a capacity of 50,000. This is quite a bit more advanced than what you start with, because I've been working on it. If you just click out somewhere else, it'll tell you how much essence is in your pool, I guess you could call it, or your network, I think is what it's what it might be called. Uh, here I've got 131,000. Essentially, if you put your orb, which is this item right here, this is the tier 3 orb, if you put your orb in, a, in the altar, it will soak up all the LP out of the altar and put it in your network. So that's reasonably straightforward. You do want to have this divination sigil if you want to see how much LP you've got either in your altar or in your network. Now once you have done that and gotten your Dagger of Sacrifice so that you can do this with mobs, things start to go quite a bit faster. It takes a lot of slates to be building this stuff and so you definitely, in my opinion, you want to go the mob route. You can go the self-sacrifice route and, and you will build different runes to upgrade your altar. It's pretty slow though. The first um, orb that I made was the weak blood orb. Let's take a look at that. That's just a mana diamond in the altar. It works with the tier 1 altar and it requires 2000 LP in the altar and you'll get this weak blood orb back. Pretty simple. The next one is the Apprentice Orb, and I think mine is sitting down here in this um, chemistry set. Yeah. But the Apprentice Blood Orb um, is a little bit tougher. It requires a block of Prismarine, which comes from Prismarine Shards in Batania. And that in turn comes from nether quartz, but crucially you have to have an alchemy catalyst made. In, and you have to put that under your, your mana pool before you can do this transmutation. So the alchemy catalyst involves a couple of alchemic chemistry sets from Blood Magic, Salus Mundus from uh, Thomcraft, and you're going to have to get some living rock, and you're going to have to have some blaze rods and some chalk from witchery. So, so they've made it they've made it interact with a whole bunch of other mods. This isn't too bad, really. You do need the blaze rods, and there's a recipe for those that is reasonably straightforward. In a compressor, you can put blaze powder. Obviously, you can also kill blazes, and it looks like you can get them from bees, although that probably isn't my first choice of a route to get them. But the alchemic chemistry set is basically made in the blood altar uh, from a regular brewing stand. So that's not too bad. When you've upgraded your blood altar to tier 3 and you want to get the magician's blood orb, it requires a lot more LP. 
and a thomium block. So to make a thomium block, you've got to have all these thomium ingots. You do have to actually make enough progress in your research and your construction in Thomcraft to do that. Now, I've gotten quite a few different um, types of blood runes here. The default one works just fine for upgrading your altar, but eventually you're going to want to upgrade your capacity, which involves these runes of augmented capacity. Let's take a look at those. These require a tier 2 slate and two blood runes. So you're actually making a total of five slates just to make this. And uh, three buckets. So it's pretty intensive on the buckets too. And each one of these increases your capacity of your altar somewhat. It just goes in the place of a regular blood rune. You can just pop out the regular blood rune and plop that in. The other rune that I'm using here is the speed rune. I've only got four of them right now, but I'll probably go ahead and upgrade these others on here to where I'll have eight pretty soon. This makes the altar operate faster. And this one is a very similar recipe. It's just using sugar and thomium instead of buckets. So that's how you're going to do that. And essentially, you're just going to upgrade this one tier at a time. So you go ahead and put in your um, runes, eight runes here, and that'll upgrade to tier two. And then you'll put in 20 runes down on the next level, and that will upgrade it to tier three. You will have to have these glowstone blocks up here, but glowstone should be readily available. Now, the next step after that is to upgrade it to Tier 4, and I've already get made the runes and put them in. There are 28 of them. Uh, the problem is I haven't made these blocks. These blocks are supposed to be large bloodstone bricks, and there's a little bit of a problem with that. The large bloodstone bricks require ritual stones and a weak blood shard in the alchemic chemistry set. That's not really... The ritual stones are not a problem. I've already made some for another reason. The weak blood shard I don't have, and there are really two ways to get it. One is if you've already got um, a weak blood shard, then you can quintuple it in the alchemic chemistry set. And I probably will do that quite a bit, because I don't know that I really want to farm these. The other way to get them, there are actually a couple of other ways to get them. In um, some mod packs, and one of them that comes to mind is Agrarian Skies 2, there are, you can get them by sieving. For example, in, in AG2, you can get them by sieving soul sand, and that's convenient, I guess. Uh, here, that's not available. The way that you're going to get them here is you're going to use the Bound Sword. And if when you... As I understand it, I've never actually done it, but as I understand it, when you use the Bound Sword, it applies a debuff to the mob, and if the mob is killed while that debuff is active, it has a chance, and it might be a 100% chance, but I don't know that it is, but it's got at least a chance of dropping a weak blood shard. So, I'm going to have to farm at least one of those, and then once I've farmed one of those, I can just quintuple them in, in here. If it's easy to farm them with, with that sword, then maybe that will be a reasonable option. But if it's hard, then I'll probably just quintuple them like this. But once I've got that, I can start making my bloodstone bricks and I can finally upgrade to tier 4. Now, one of the things is, if you do that with the bound blade, you get an achievement. Pick up a bound sword. Great you get an achievement for that. Well, unfortunately, um, if we look at how you make the bound sword, which is this one right here, you need a sword of the zephyr. And you're going to run it through this binding ritual, which is something that I will set up when I'm ready to do that achievement, which won't be this episode, but it might be next episode. 
to make the Sword of the Zephyr, you've got to have an infusion altar. Uh, is it called an infusion altar? You've got to, you've got to be able to do infusion in Thomcraft, regardless of what the, the construct is called. To do that, you've got to have the Runic Matrix. And the Runic Matrix, interestingly enough, is another one of the achievements. So really, I'm kind of needing to do this achievement, but I've got to do this one first. Well, that's not a problem. Let's see what's involved in the Runic Matrix. So I've got to have an Attune Stone from Witchery, and four Blood Runes, and these five Runes from Batania, which are all the basic ones. They're pretty straightforward. And then I've got to have an entire pool of mana. So that's, that's the thing that I need to make that's going to take some time. Let's go ahead and make that. So I need four Blood Runes, and I think I've probably got some on hand here. Yes, I do. And if we come over here to the Witchery area, I don't know... I don't have a spare Attune Stone just sitting around, but it's a Whiff of Magic, and um, a Mana Diamond, and a Bucket of Lava. Uh, if I had my Bucket on hand, I do. I can get some Lava here because I brought some up. Let's go back down and get a Mana Diamond and craft that. So a Mana Diamond right there. So there's my Tune Stone. Those machines are a little loud because they're low on power. Uh, it's probably changing out the, uh, the fuel right now. Okay, so I need all of these different runes, the mana and the four elemental ones. And it looks like I have all of them. So just double checking what's required here. Four blood runes, one attuned stone, and five different Batania runes. And that is what I've got. So let's come over here. Lever is down, so it's not going to go through. And we'll put that in there. Flip the lever, it'll drop all the items on there and should start crafting. There we go. Let's see what kind of progress this is making. I think it's going to be very slow. Yeah, it's only got the very slightest sliver showing up there for having crafted it. So I'm going to go ahead and put flip that switch back and we'll put it's still going to have to have a living rock in order to trigger the completion, but I'll just put it in the chest for now. So it's it's very slowly progressing. It's going to have to pump out a whole pool of mana through these things. So I'm going to go ahead and and cut the video and come back when when that's done. All right, I'm back, and our um, Runic Matrix has finished crafting, so let me drop the Living Rock down there and click the altar. And I did get it, and I got the achievement, and I got all of my runes back, so that's very nice. So let's go and put these away, and I'll put the achievement on the fence post. right there. So I've got uh, seven achievements in a row there. It's getting making some real progress. Alright, now the Runic Matrix is just a piece of the overall infusion altar. Let's come down here and look at what I got. I have laid out the essential pattern of the altar right here on the ground. I'm going to keep the floor of the fancy nether rack brick. I was just sort of experimenting with what I thought might look okay. Uh, we'll have to see. I might eventually change it out for something else. Maybe something more thom crafty, like more arcane stone. But for the moment, this, this will do, I think. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace each of these around the edge with a pedestal.
The pedestal is where you put the items that are being consumed in the crafting. And I've gone ahead and made 14 of them. I need 13 total. Let's take a look at that. It's, it's actually a very simple recipe. Uh, once you've got some arcane stone blocks, you just put them in this pattern. And you do need air aspects, so it has to be made in the arcane work table. And you get two of them at a time. So let's go ahead and put those down. You want to have these arranged in a pattern that's symmetrical. And I'm not entirely sure what exactly symmetrical means in the context of Thomcraft. Because actually there are a lot of different kinds of symmetry. And I don't know for sure what it checks. I am going to sort of assume that it wants um, a sort of radial symmetry where it goes and checks uh, opposite each side for things that it wants. But in this case, in this case I'm just arranging 12 of them in something that sort of approximates a circle. And that will take up 12 of these pedestals. You don't need to use 12 pedestals in this particular arrangement. You can arrange them in any symmetrical pattern you like. 12 will give you enough to be able to craft possibly everything that you're going to need. Um, I don't know if I've seen recipes that take more than 8, but I also couldn't say that they don't exist. Now, in the there's going to be another pedestal right here in the very center, which is on top of that light. That's not so nice. But now I need to have four of the arcane stone bricks and four arcane stone. And I think it is bricks on the bottom. One thing kind of nasty about anything netherrack is that it just breaks instantaneously with almost any pick. Alright, we'll put those down there, there, and there. And then the last piece is the runic matrix, and it goes on the top here. And I put that brick in there temporarily because there does have to be a gap here. So it goes right there. The next piece that I need is I need to um, whack it with a wand. And the wand does have to have 25 of each flavor of these in it. This is a gold banded great wood wand. It's got 50 so we're in good shape there. And we did everything correct and it went ahead and arranged up and got started. So I can now do infusion. What I'll have to do when I get ready to do any sort of infusion is, um, and you know, maybe why don't I just do a quick infusion here. Something not too complicated that I will definitely need. Um, how about, let's look at that Sword of the Zephyr and see what's required for that one. Uh, two air shards, one great wood log, one diamond, a thomium sword, and negligible uh, risk on it. So that's pretty good. Then I'm going to need potentia, modus, and air. Eight each. That's act eight is a very good number. Let's see if I have those particular ones. There's my modus. There's the potentia. There's the air. You get three jars here. Now it needed. Do I have thomium? I do. Do I have great wood? I do. So let's take a look at this. I think it's just a stick. Yeah. 
Let me come up here and get a stick. Uh, I have sticks in a chest here, or in a, a drawer here. Yeah, there we go. Probably can't make it in this station. Oh, I can. Okay. So, it looks like I need a diamond and two air shards. Now, air shards are one of the relatively difficult ones to make uh, because it requires that you have, I think it's stacked sandstone slabs, and, and so you're only able to make them manually. But I have quite a few of them at this point because I've been using bees to make them. And so I've got nearly 500 of them accumulated here, so that's actually a pretty nice use for bees is to save having to automate those some other way. These are just going into an auto crafting table, a build craft auto crafting table. They're just being, the components of this are just being sort of um, item synced into it and then the completed shards are extracted out. I'm currently also doing the same thing with earth shards, which is why I've got so many of them. I haven't really looked at doing the other shards with them, but it looks like order and entropy might be good choices. Uh, so let's see what we got here. We need two air shards. I didn't bother to get them. I just sort of gabbed on about them. So we need to put our um, aspects in warded jars somewhere reasonably close to the the altar. And I don't know that the warded jars have to be symmetrical. I've never really tried doing them symmetrical. But the items that you're going to be um, using in the infusion should be. So I'm going to arrange these on the center on each side. Since it's four items, just use four out of the 12 pedestals on the sides. I'll put the thomium sword in the middle. And we're ready to go. So I'll just uh, click this and get it started. And it's um, sucking in the aspects from the jars. Even on the far side there where it can barely be seen. And now it's pulling in the items. There haven't been any bad effects so far. And it's a fairly short recipe, so it should go pretty quickly. And it finished. So we've got our Sword of the Zephyr. And as usual, you want to scan this thing. So let me do that. Alright. And until next episode when I uh, make the bound blade, I think I'm just going to let that stay there. So I think that really sort of completes what I wanted to get done this episode. It's going to be maybe just a little bit shorter than it sometimes is. But uh, next time will be probably another magic episode focusing more specifically on blood magic. Until then... Thank you for watching.